Hello and welcome to our webinar entitled Uncovering the True Intent of File Integrity Monitoring. My name is Paul Norris, also known as PJ, and I'm a Senior Systems Engineer for Tripwire. And as you can tell by my accent, I'm based in our London offices. Before Tripwire, my background is information security, working in the industry for over 15 years. During the webcast today, we'll start off with an introduction to what is FIM and where it all started. I will then discuss some of the common misconceptions of FIM and what I've come across when working with customers. Then, as the title of our webcast suggests, I'm going to delve into other areas of FIM and show to you that there's more to integrity monitoring than just monitoring files themselves. I will then introduce you to Command Output Capture Rules, also known as COCA. This is where I'm going to ask you to think differently about integrity monitoring and give you some examples of this powerful feature. We will then conduct a live demonstration of Tripwire Enterprise, where I will emulate a famous breach that occurred to a US retail store a few years ago. During this demo, we will attack a point of sale device and extract credit card numbers. We will see in the demo how Tripwire Enterprise will detect and remediate this type of attack. And finally, we'll show you how Tripwire solutions can make FIM easier and summarize with some key takeaways. So let's get started. What is FIM? And where did that term come from? Tripwire was founded in 1997 and launched its first product known as Tripwire for Servers, which was commonly known as Change Audit. But it all started off with Gene Kim as a university project back in 1991, where he and a lecturer invented the concept to detect the presence of a famous worm known as the Morris worm. In 1992, Gene invented Tripwire Open Source to detect changes on Unix systems, whether it was malicious or accidental. Towards the end of the 90s, the internet e-commerce boom was fully underway, with online use of credit cards soaring. To prevent and detect online theft of cardholder data, Visa started the Cardholder Information Security Program, or known as CISP which contained 12 required sets of security controls that all merchants and processors were required to comply with. This is when Change Audit was renamed to FIM, or File Integrity Monitoring, and Tripwire was named as a solution in CISP. At the end of 2004, CISP was used as the basis to create the Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard, or as we fondly refer it to today as PCI DSS. Version 1 was launched. In 2006, the PCI Council decided to remove all vendor references from the standard and launch PCI DSS 1.1. Over the years, as the PCI DSS standard has evolved, file integrity monitoring is still a key requirement referenced currently in 10.5.5 and 11.5 of the standard. FIM and change detection is also mentioned in other standards and policies as well. Whilst working with Tripwire, I've had the pleasure of meeting a number of prospects who are looking to invest in our solutions. I've put together some of the comments and feedbacks I've received from the organisations into misconceptions of file integrity monitoring. Let's start off with an obvious one, and a question that I get often asked, and it goes like, Surely if I start to monitor all my endpoints for changes, I'll be inundated with a number of alerts which could potentially be false positives. Well, my answer to this one is a simple one. Yes, if you turn monitoring on for everything, then you will see a lot of alerts. The thing is, when it comes to FIM, we should only be interested in monitoring specific files or files that we would classify as critical files. We don't need to monitor absolutely everything on the endpoint. That would be too onerous and time consuming and it would generate a lot of unnecessary alerts. So we should be focusing on the files that are deemed critical such as the System32 folder or specific registry keys on Windows systems, or the bin and configuration folders such as etc on Linux and Unix, etc. These files should not change that often. Therefore, we shouldn't be getting many alerts. And when they do change, if we integrate the solution into other technologies, such as a service management solution that manages change requests, or refer to feeds from patching providers, such as TechNet from Microsoft, we can further reduce the amount of alerts and false positives, allowing you, as the user, to focus on those unauthorized changes. Sometimes concerns are raised about endpoint overload and performance factors. 
Like any good vendor who relies having software on the endpoint to monitor changes, it's optimized to ensure minimum impact to the system in question. I generally talk about having the advantages of having an agent on the endpoint and what capabilities it brings along with how it integrates with the operating system. In Tripwire's case, it has an agent that sits on the endpoint. The main advantage of having the agent enables Tripwire to monitor for changes in real time. It also enables access to other functions and features such as configuration management and ensuring endpoints are compliant to a specific standard or policy. Due to the way the agent is optimized, there's minimal or no impact monitoring files on the endpoint, which has been tested in customer environments. So how does FIM help me with data security? At a basic level, FIM will verify that those important system and configuration files have not changed. These should only change when there's an update or patch that's implemented. If it changes any other time, then it could be a piece of malware or a virus that is harvesting data and exfiltrating it. Currently, security measures in place may only be focusing on signature-based changes. Therefore, if a zero-day attack occurred, FIM will detect that change and become that must-have security defense measure. It also goes for configuration files and computer configuration settings. If these were altered in any way that could weaken the system's security posture, having integrity monitoring would detect these changes and help you remediate before a breach occurs. So how about the lack of context in the changes? Some customers have seen other technologies out there that do basic levels of file integrity monitoring. So I can understand their concerns when they inform me that it gives them no context about the change and it will simply detect a change on the endpoint given the date, the time and the name of the file that has changed. For some, that's all they want, but they then have to investigate further to ascertain what was changed and who made the change. With Tripwire Enterprise, we add information to the change. The software tell you the timings, what file was changed, and also provide you who made the change, and where applicable, also tell you what changed in that file, registry, or configuration setting. This enables the user to understand more about the change and verify if it was a legitimate change or not. And finally, one of my favorite observations, FIM will only monitor file systems. Well, this is simply not true. There is so much more to integrity monitoring than just looking at the file systems. And with that in mind, this deserves its own slide. What else can we be monitoring? As we discussed earlier, FIM is an essential part in your security posture, but there are other areas we can monitor for changes. So databases. With databases, we can monitor a number of things, such as the content of a specific database, the schematic, or the roles and permissions. I do get asked from time to time, why would I want to monitor for changes on a database that, by design, updates often? Well, you probably wouldn't from a content perspective, but I would strongly advise to monitor the access control list or the permissions of that database. These shouldn't change that often. And then there are gonna be those databases that do remain static. Those are the ones you would want to report on if a new record was added, changed, or deleted. Directory services, or more commonly known as Active Directory. We have quite a few customers who use our solution to monitor for changes in Active Directory, whether it's monitoring a new user that's added, or if someone's been added to a restricted Active Directory group. It's widely acknowledged in some organizations that there are a number of changes made to Active Directory outside change control which the customer is totally unaware. By monitoring Active Directory gives the customer full visibility to all changes made. I worked with a customer last year who purchased Tripwire Enterprise and enabled Active Directory monitoring. They were able to determine that a domain admin was adding a standard user to the domain administrators group for about 30 minutes and then removing them. And this was done on a weekly basis. These changes were outside change control and therefore unauthorized. The customer was able to identify the user being added and the administrator who was adding them. Subsequently, one of the employees no longer worked at that organization. Virtual infrastructures is another area that can be monitored for changes. For example, monitor for changes if a new VM is created, modified or deleted. The guest virtual machines are covered by file integrity monitoring, of course. 
And finally, but by no means least, network devices such as routers, switches, and firewalls. Via a command line interface such as SSH or Telnet, rules can be ran to pull back specific configurations such as access control lists, firewall rules, configuration information. If changes occur, that can be reported on what was changed. And now for something slightly different. I want to talk to you about command output capture rules. Command output capture rules, or COCA for short, is a very powerful feature within Tripwire Enterprise. As the name suggests, this allows the agent to execute any command on the endpoint and capture the output of that command. For example, if I executed DIR on the endpoint, then Tripwire Enterprise would capture the output of a directory listing. In the example here, I'm executing a command on a Linux system to capture what packages are installed. When we run this script again and a new package has been added or removed, Tripwire Enterprise can show you that change. And here's a more complex example of a COCA rule. In this example, we are using the full capabilities of running a command on the endpoint with parameters to list all the scheduled tasks, but to use fine string to remove next run and last run from the output, as this would dynamically change a lot and generate a lot of alerts. Generally, I ask the customer to think different when talking about FIM and COCA rules. Potentially, the possibilities are endless. The customer could start monitoring some proprietary application if it had a command line to pull back the configuration. We've covered off a number of areas where we can monitor for changes, such as file systems, databases, Active Directory, virtual infrastructures, and network devices. But through automation and continuous monitoring, we can start to reduce the risk and operational costs and apply context and full visibility to what has changed within the environment. Through integrations with third parties such as service management and threat integration, we can home in on those unapproved and unauthorized changes and help detect zero day attacks occurring in real time within the environment. Okay, enough slides and lecturing for now, and let me show you some fun stuff. We're gonna do a live demonstration using Tripwire Enterprise. For most of us, we will remember the infamous breach that occurred to the US retailer, Target, back in 2013. A number of the retailer's stores in the US were breached, which resulted in the loss of over 40 million credit cards and over 70 million personal records in just over three weeks. To me, this implies that Target took three weeks to realize they were leaking this information outside the environment, which is an eternity for the hacker. The full details of the breach were never released. However, it was widely speculated by a number of sources that via the patch management service, a piece of malware was propagated to over 170 odd devices in over 1700 stores throughout the US. The nature of the malware harvested credit card data by scraping the memory for credit card patterns and then storing the information as a clear text file on the terminal before attempting to exfiltrate it out of the customer's environment. What then followed the breach was a significant lawsuit settlement, expenses and insurance payouts. In the following live demo, I will show how FIM could have potentially helped detect and prevent the target breach. I'm going to emulate a point of sale terminal. In this case, it will be a Windows 7 machine. Tripwire Enterprise will be configured to monitor any changes on the desktop and its child folders. I'm then going to drop a, a malware emulator onto the desktop that is designed to scrape credit card data from the computer's memory. Tripwire Enterprise will detect the changes to the desktop and also through threat integration, identify the files to be malicious. I will then swipe a credit card into the notepad and use the malware to scan the process memory for credit card data. Tripwire will then identify the log file that is generated by the malware to contain a credit card pattern. We will then use Tripwire Enterprise to terminate the running malware and erase it from the hard disk. We will also tidy up the credit card log data as well. This is a homepage I've created in Tripwire Enterprise that shows the status of my point of sale terminal. 
At the moment, we can see no changes to the endpoint, no malware discovered, and no credit card data found. This is our point of sale device. It's a Windows 7 machine for this demo. I happen to have a zip file that contains some credit card scrapers. For the purpose of this demo, this is a benign application that scrapes memory for credit card data, which would have been very similar to the malware that had been used in the target breach, only without a user interface. I'm going to extract the contents of the zip file to the desktop. I currently have Tripwire Enterprise monitoring the desktop for any changes. Let's return to Tripwire Enterprise and see what we see. So as mentioned, I configured Tripwire Enterprise to monitor the Windows 7 desktop for changes in real time. As soon as the change is detected, we can report and start a workflow for next steps. We can see there's been a number of changes to the desktop, in total about 91 files. Let's click on this report and drill down to see how Tripwire has detected these files. You can see all these files are new files added and to add context, we can also show who added the files. In this case, it was a user called Ray. Let's return to our dashboard. We can also see that Tripwire has detected three files flagged as malicious. For the purpose of this demonstration, I have asked Tripwire to match the file signatures to three known hashes in a local database. However, within a customer environment, Tripwire can make an API call to any threat intelligence service, such as ThreatGrid, Lastline, Palo Alto, etc., and pass the file signature or hash to them to see if it's a known threat. If there is no match, Tripwire could submit the binary to the third party via the API for analysis. If tested to be positive threat, information is fed back into Tripwire and perhaps drive a different workflow or response. Let's click on the malicious files report and review what files pose a threat to us. We can see three executables which match. Let us return to our point of sale endpoint. I'm now going to open up a notepad and by using a card reader, I'm going to swipe a credit card into the notepad. There you go. Some of you may notice my surname and the track data captured. This was my wife's expired and totally maxed out credit card, which I managed to obtain from her. Now I'm not going to save this notepad. This is just a visual representation of a point of sale application taking a card payment. Instead, I'm going to launch my memory scraping malware called Memory Scraper. I'm now going to select the notepad service to scan from the drop down list and search for any credit card data. Now complete, the memory scraping software has generated a log file in the folder it launched from. Let's open it up and see what it has captured. There you go. You can see my wife's credit card present in the log. If we refer back to the target breach, this is what the malware did. It scraped memory for credit card patterns and created a log file containing the compromised data. Another process then attempted to exfiltrate that information from the customer's environment. Let's return back to Tripwire Enterprise dashboard and see what Tripwire reports. We now see on the loose card data report one file that contains loose card data. Let's click on this and drill down. We can see that it's picked up the log file that the memory scraping application generated. We can also have Tripwire capture the contents of clear text files. It's important to point out this is an optional feature. In a real environment, I wouldn't necessarily capture potential credit card data. That would not be a good practice. I'm doing this in a demonstration environment to give you an example how Tripwire could help investigations by capturing data. Now let's instruct Tripwire Enterprise to remove the offending log file that was discovered. Let's drop back to that list that contains the log file and switch to the elements view. From here, we can select the file and run an action. In this instance, I will run a script on the endpoint to simply delete the file. If we drop back to our point of sale terminal, we can see the file has been deleted. Tripwire Enterprise instructed the agent on the endpoint to delete the file. 
we can still see our malware is still running. So let's do this for the malware, but this time we will need to instruct the agent to terminate the running process before deleting it. Let's drop back to our dashboard and click on the malicious files report. We'll select the file and run an action. This time I will select the action that will terminate the process and delete the file. As we return to our endpoint, we can now clearly see the memory scraping software has been terminated and the offending executable has been deleted. Now we have concluded the live demonstration, you can see how Tripwire Enterprise helped identify the changes to the desktop, identify malware and the presence of credit card data. We then used the scripts to terminate the malware and eradicate it from the endpoint. Now I want to share with you some of the Tripwise capabilities in helping with FIM compliance. Most people know us for file integrity monitoring. This was our first product and we are still best in industry at detecting integrity changes and, as we have learnt today, not just on files. We've added configuration and policy management to our core capability to make it more robust and useful and added automation to reduce the workload associated with compliance management. We added log management capabilities to make sense of the data generated by your operations. And we acquired a technology that helps you identify the biggest risks in your network with the industry's most precise risk scoring algorithm so you can set actionable priorities. We've integrated all these capabilities to work together seamlessly for real risk reductions. And finally, we have an open architecture so we can exchange our unique asset state data with many of the most used vendors in the IT industry and operations space. So let me discuss some key takeaways I can share with you today. We covered the misconceptions of file integrity monitoring today and shown that it does not have to be an onerous task and can help reduce risk within your infrastructure. There's so much more than just monitoring files. We have shown that databases, Active Directory, virtual infrastructures and network devices have changes that can significantly cause disruption to your environment if malicious. And don't forget the all powerful command output capture rules, which expands the capability in detecting changes to other applications and platforms. And finally, integrating with other technologies such as change management solutions and threat integration to provide rich context and validation to the changes discovered. We have a wide range of resources available on our website and don't forget to subscribe to our security blog called Tripwire State of Security, where you will find a number of articles written by professionals, including myself. So that concludes our webcast for today. Thank you very much for listening and goodbye.